Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and this is MedPIC's Case of the Week, number 699. We have no significant financial disclosures nor conflict of interest to report. This case was contributed by Stephen J. Goldstein from the University of Kentucky. The patient is a 36-year-old man who was found unconscious in his car in the garage the morning after driving home from a party. He was brought to the emergency room in a coma. A toxicology screen and routine laboratory blood work is still pending, but we have an emergency non-contract CT scan. These two slices, both at the level of the quadrigeminal plate cistern, are clearly abnormal. In the center, we have a normal slice from a similar location, and we can see on our images that there is abnormal decreased attenuation in the medial portion of the basal ganglia. Which portion of the basal ganglia is this? If we look at this brain slice, we can see the anatomic landmarks of the third ventricle and the quadrigeminal plate cistern, which we can also identify on our scans. We can see the frontal horns of a lateral ventricle, and we want to remember that the frontal horns are partially shaped by the head of the caudate nucleus. We have the lateral lenticular nucleus, and we have the gray matter of the thalamus, all arranged as we see here on the brain slice. So this patient has multiple lesions of decreased attenuation on the CT. They're bilateral and symmetric. They're localized to the gray matter of the basal ganglia, and most importantly, they're localized to the globus pallidus. Following the CT, an MR series was also obtained. It demonstrates corresponding abnormalities involving the medial portion of the lenticular nucleus, the area of the globus pallidus. We can see these on T2, we can see the same corresponding lesions on the flare image, and we can also see that there is restricted diffusion in the globus pallidus bilaterally. So the findings in this case are multiple lesions consisting of increased signal on MR and decreased attenuation on CT. They're bilateral and symmetric, localized to the gray matter of the basal ganglia, and most particularly involving the globus pallidus. What is a differential diagnosis for this? They could be infarcts, it could be viral disease, it could be inflammatory vasculitis, it could be a neoplasm, but the pattern of bilateral abnormalities that are symmetric involving the gray matter should strongly suggest a toxic or metabolic process. Toxic and metabolic diseases may be intrinsic or they may be extrinsic due to exposures. The localization in the medial lenticular nucleus or globus pallidus is strongly suggestive of carbon monoxide intoxication, which was confirmed in this patient by carboxyhemoglobin levels in the patient's blood. So what is carbon monoxide? It's a tasteless, odorless gas, and like most of my jokes, it's mostly tasteless. It's produced by combustion of hydrocarbons, gasoline, kerosene, natural gas, propane, butane, charcoal, wood, paper, etc. Carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin and red cells and prevents oxygen from binding, which causes tissue hypoxia that affects the brain and the heart first. Carbon monoxide toxicity or poisoning is very common. In the United States, it accounts for 15 to 40,000 emergency visits per year. The mortality is variable, but can be up to 30%. Accidental carbon monoxide poisoning kills about 500 to up to 3,000 people annually. But intentional carbon monoxide poisoning, as in suicide, is approximately 10 times more frequent, killing up to 6,000 people per year. The sources of carbon monoxide include unvented space heaters, leaking chimneys and backdrafting from furnaces, gas water heaters, wood stoves, gas grills, etc., generators and other fuel burning equipment, automobile exhaust in an attached garage, or incomplete oxidation during combustion in any gas appliance, which is why we should have our gas furnaces and water heaters inspected and tuned up every year. The initial symptoms of low levels of carbon monoxide are similar to the flu, but without a fever, including fatigue, headache, dizziness, chest pain, nausea, and shortness of breath. Increasing levels of carbon monoxide cause mental confusion and loss of muscular coordination, which may resemble intoxication with alcohol. Vomiting, loss of consciousness, coma, and death may ensue with progressively higher levels of carbon monoxide. 
Carbon monoxide is selectively toxic for the medial lenticular nucleus or the globus pallidus, producing an increase in the content of water and restricted diffusion as we saw in our case. At autopsy, the patients will demonstrate corresponding lesions in the medial lenticular nucleus. Here we see the caudate nuclei, the putamen, which is the lateral portion of the lenticular nucleus, and abnormal pallor or loss of color in the medial lenticular nucleus, which is the globus pallidus. So our patient had carbon monoxide intoxication. Carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin 240 times more strongly than oxygen can. And again, the symptoms include headache, lethargy, weakness, and dizziness, which may mimic many types of intoxication. The treatment is to displace the carbon monoxide with oxygen, which can be done at room air. It's faster with 100% oxygen and is fastest in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So in summary, our patient had carbon monoxide intoxication, demonstrating the classic lesions involving the medial portion of the lenticular nucleus that are bilateral and symmetric. And this is the pattern we expect to see with carbon monoxide intoxication. Carbon monoxide is a tasteless, odorless gas that can be produced by a variety of equipment, including using a generator inside during a power failure. I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and I have approved this message. Thank you kindly for your attention.